Okay, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and get started with the April um, CECC webinar. Today we're going to be discussing some questions that I heard about um, as I went through doing those regional trainings. And I have gone ahead and muted everybody um, here at the beginning as we go through some of your questions that you have maybe asked as we um, as we talk about some of this stuff on here. And then once we finish with the presentation, I'm going to go ahead and open that up to everybody um, so that you can ask questions that you may have now that we've done the regional trainings and hopefully everybody's had a chance to take a look at the RFA. Um, so if you were able to attend um, one of our regional trainings, I hope that um, everybody knows that CECCs play a vital role in preparing all children for kindergarten. We discussed a lot about how at least 50% of our um, children are not in an organized setting, and that's where we really see CECCs fitting in and contacting those parents to make sure that their children are um, ready for school, um, ready for kindergarten once they get there. So just as a few reminders to start off with, um, we have uh, released the RFA back in uh, March 17th. I just finished up those regional trainings last week. That intent to apply will be due next Tuesday. So if you haven't gotten that in already, if you wouldn't uh, try to do that as quickly as possible. Um, and then throughout the rest of April and May, we'll kind of be doing statewide technical assistance. If you guys have any questions, um, about the RFA or anything like that, we'll be more than happy to answer those um, through that time. The applications will be due on May 15th, and that is the um, postmark date. It doesn't have to be in our office on May 15th, but that's the postmark date. And then finally, um, through May and June, they'll go through our uh, review process, and um, in July, we will be announcing awards. So. Just a w real quick review of what that schedule looks like. So the next big important day is going to be that April 15th. Now, while the intent to apply does not um, bind you to actually um, applying for the grant funds, it does. it is required to receive um, a review of your application. <clears throat> Um, another slide that if you attended one of our uh, regional trainings that you've probably seen before. Um, but again, you know, one of the major components that we're looking for here is to make sure that we are, that CECCs are being responsive to the data that they have at hand. So utilizing that, the early childhood profiles and other data that you may have available, um, it being intentional and deliberate with those activities to help improve those outcomes that you identify, and then finally ever evolving and expanding throughout the community to make sure that we have um, uh, everyone sitting at the table and emphasizing that importance on school readiness. So while I was out on the road uh, talking to CECCs across the state, there were some questions that we heard, um, uh, several, several questions that we heard. So we thought we'd take this opportunity with the webinar to just kind of broaden that conversation and expand that conversation just a little bit. And then also to um, uh, ask you guys if, you know, now that the regional trainings are over, now that you've had a chance to maybe sit down with your CECC and examine the RFA with any questions that you may have, um, uh, and get those answered as well. So here are a few of the questions that we have about the early uh, childhood profile that was released this year. Um, there have been some minor changes. Most of the data that you'll see on there is uh, the same that you saw last year. Um, but we did receive a few questions, some pointed questions about the data that we wanted to make sure that you guys understood. So first, some of the data seems very different from, it was, from, it was, from what it was last year. Why, why would that be? Well, a lot of the information that's on there, um, the, the time period of which the data is collected is different according to which data point you're looking at. For example, um, I know that the first steps information that we had on last year's profile was rolled up into a three-year number, whereas this year we actually had one year's worth of data. So you may have seen a large drop-off in the number of families served by first steps, but it's because we only had the one year for this year. So again, what is the time period for each set of data? It, again, it depends on what data set you're actually looking, looking at. So each different program is going to report data a little bit differently according to um, how their, their data is reported for that program. So if you have specific questions about that, um, just give us a call, let us know, um, and we will get the information as we can. 
Why is the data for the workforce so different from what it was last year? It's not quite as expansive on this year's profile as it was last year. Um, what we discovered when we were looking at some of that workforce data is um, each one of the, 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 the types of credentials that someone could get was, was reported just a little bit differently. So it was really hard to get a, a good snapshot of what the local workforce looked like. Um, what we are hoping is with um, some of those race to the top dollars of creating a system where we will be able to easily get that information and hopefully get that to you in your guys' hands within the next couple of years. And how can I get access to more detailed data? Um, you want to talk to your local school district. They're going to have the uh, most up-to-date and most detailed information about, um, specifically about the kindergarten screener. Um, they'll have um, demographic, broken down in demographic information and that sort of thing. If you do want to have a conversation with your school district about that, you may have to um, come to some sort of agreement um, with, the, uh, with the, the district on how that information can be used, how it can be, re uh, how it can be released, and all of that kind of stuff. So that's something to consider um, as you're uh, trying to get a little bit more detailed information. Um, so like I said, we did have those regional trainings, which I was really excited to get out um, and sit down with everybody and really learn a little bit more about what your guys' needs are on the ground. Um, so over the course of about a week and a half, um, I or Joe Roberts came out and talked to you guys in detail about what um, the RFA looked like this year and some uh, strategies on how to write a successful grant. Um, so that was really exciting. I really, really enjoyed getting out there and getting on the road. Um, it was the weather was crazy though. I'd had one day where it was um, snowing, and the next day it would be 80. It was just it was crazy, but it was a lot of fun. I really appreciate everybody taking the time um, to come out and sit down with those. Um, we had 10 across the state, and we had 168 um, CECC members join us at those, which was really exciting. Which equals out to about 17 people per training. So that was. Really Really exciting to see, you know, as we continue to grow and expand um, the CECC membership, you know, a lot of folks are becoming more and more interested on what we're doing with these regional trainings and, and reaching out to you guys. So we were really excited to see those numbers. Um, if you haven't had a chance already, we have been putting some information up on the RFA toolkit. Um, if you were involved with the writing of the grant last year, we did pretty much continually update throughout the grant process, um, update this website with different uh, templates and resources for you guys to use. So you definitely want to always go back and check that, you know, just whenever you can um, as we move forward. So a few of the things that I promised uh, during those regional trainings was a cover page and a conflict of interest that, that will be typable on your computer so you don't have to print those out and hand write those. Um, so we have made those available on there for you. Um, you'll also find the budget template, um, the work plan, and the members, li members list template. Um, so those are all there. We went over those um, in the regional trainings, and I'll be happy to walk through those again if anybody has any questions about those. Um, you'll notice there in the center of the page, we have also added the budget amendment request. Um, we have been getting quite a bit of those now that we're moving into the Ready Kids Conference. So we went ahead and put that up for up there for you guys to have access to. So if you do have a budget amendment um, that you need to make, go ahead and download that and send it in to us. And then finally, that 2014 RFA overview PowerPoint is on there as well for, um, for a resource for you guys. Um, and then uh, the 2014, link to the 2014 Early Childhood Profiles. The intent to apply is there, again, that May 15th date. Um, and then off to the right-hand side, we still have all of those documents that we had placed up on the web, excuse me, up on the toolkit from last year. So feel free to utilize any of those um, that you may have found helpful last year. Um, we have the link to the 2013 Early Childhood Profile so that you guys can look at the differences in the data there. Um, the conflict of interest, the cover page, it all looks a lot similar to to what it was this year, but we hopefully, um, through using uh, the Word documents, it'll be a little bit easier for you guys to use. Those templates will. 
Um, so here are just some, some general questions that we had uh, while we were uh, doing those regional training. So who needs to sign the forms if we know that CECC will be, leadership will be changing hands between um, the writing of the RFA and when, uh, uh, when the funds are actually received? The people that need to sign that needs to be the contact that we that you want us to have. So um, we definitely need the chair's information. We do uh, communicate with them quite often and the fiscal agent's information. But, you know, if you have someone who, um, you know, is going to be kind of the one that works on all of your communication stuff and that's somebody that you want us to identify and pull out specifically for some of our information, let us know that. Um, we just need to know those things so that we can make sure that our um, – so that uh, the chairs do get updated information, make sure that our website is updated with the most current information as well as those profiles. So it really depends on who the CECC uh, wants to sign that paperwork, whoever is going to be our main contact for this grant fiscal year. Uh, the work plan is a new document, but it's similar to other documents that we've used. Is it a replacement for the strategic plan? Um, the strategic plan is meant to be written in narrative form, so the work plan is actually going to be just a little bit different. What we're looking for with that work plan document is not a narrative. We're not asking you to rewrite everything that you wrote in your strategic plan. We're really just looking for one sentence for each one of those blocks to explain what your activity is. So we're not necessarily... Um, we're not looking for another long version of what you've got going on, but much more just um, those those uh, one one uh, one sentence explanations. Um, do centers need to be rated to receive many grant funds? This is a question that we have received a couple of different times, so I just want to make sure it's clear with everybody. Um, the RFA is, does not specify that the that a um, uh, child, child care center needs to be rated to receive many grant funds. Um, those funds are, you know, the focus of those funds are to get folks into, um, well, not the focus, but one reason is um, to use those funds for uh, participating in or raising your STARS level. So, you know, you may have a STARS rated center or a non-STARS rated center who's interested in learning more and you use some of those mini grant funds to help support them in that. So it's not specifically um, said in the RFA um, that, you, that centers need to be rated to receive those mini grant funds, but you should carefully consider what you want to use those funds for when thinking through your strategic plan. Can a CECC use funds for refreshment at events? Um, this is talked about in the RFA pretty exp explicitly. We do ask that CECCs not use funds for refreshments. Um, that's for a couple of different reasons. One, it helps CECCs get out into the community and find um, partners, whether it be restaurants or local grocery stores or whatever, to help donate that stuff as well as get volunteers to the table. But also, this is much more about getting families, um, getting information into families' hands about why it's important to be school ready. So while refreshments will do a lot to do to bring recruitment to the table, we really want to focus those funds um, on that school readiness piece. Can CECC funds be used for billboards in the area? We get a lot of questions, um, uh, various questions related to this sort of question. How, do you, how, do, how does the CECC best go about getting information out into the community? Me personally, I'm a little bit, um, I'm not sure um, how effective billboards are. Um, I haven't really looked too much into it to see to see how effective they are, but there's nothing in the RFA that says that funds can't be used for that. So if the CECC determines that um, that's something that they would like to see, then absolutely um, those funds can be used for that. Uh, when is the last date for money to be moved from one line item to another? Um, according to Kentucky state law, it is 30 days um, after I'm sorry, 30 days before um, the end of the fiscal year. Um, so we will make sure that everybody has that budget amendment in their hands as we get closer. Um, so if you have any other questions um, about that, just let me know. We also received a few more questions about the conflict of interest. So just wanted to touch base on those again. Um, does it need to be signed by all members every year. Unfortunately, yes, it does. Kentucky, the law that kind of governs over CECCs is pretty explicit on, um, on that piece. So it does need to be submitted to our office by all members every year. 
Um, and can you explain the difference between who signs on line one and who signs on line two? Now, line one um, is about um, if someone owns a business that may gain financially from votes that are taken through the CECC. So, for example, if you are a uh, child care center director who maybe um, is up for receiving a mini grant from the CECC, then you would have to abstain from the vote on that particular, um, on the receiving of that mini grant. Right, and that's where you would sign on one. So it's about um, if you have a business that's similar that may be receiving funds through uh, the CECC. Now, on line two is if you're an organization that delivers products. So if you are a um, trainer, for example, um, who may be doing a training for the CECC and get paid for that training, that's where you would sign on line two. So you're actually delivering that service to the community um, through that training. So that's the difference between one and two. Um, now, um, so what if so many folks have to abstain by signing this conflict of interest that the CECC doesn't have a quorum to actually place the vote? According to Robert's Rules of Order, as long as the members are present, as long as 40% of the members are present, that's when the vote can be taken. So it doesn't, even if some of your um, members have to abstain for a particular vote, as long as they are in the room when the vote is taken, that is okay. So um, just a couple of reminders about that conflict of interest. We do have to have them every year. Um, and a quick explanation of uh, the difference between line one and line two. Um, okay, so for the Ready Kids Conference, we did receive a lot of questions about that uh, as we were moving through the state, and we'll continue to answer those as we um, get closer and closer. Um, but when can I register? We are in the process right now of putting the pieces together to get the registration page up. We're really hoping to get that out soon, um, and I can promise that that will be in your guys' inbox as soon as we get that up. Can I submit a budget amendment to send more people to the Ready Kids Conference? We definitely want as many uh, CECC members to be there as possible to have a good representation at the Ready Kids Conference. But we are asking folks to use extra funds that maybe you didn't expect. Maybe if you had put some money in there for um, a trainer to come in and do a training, they offer to do it for free, so you have a little bit of extra money. But um, don't use – don't um, – change up the activities that you ha have already planned to send more folks to, um, to the, the conference. What days should we plan on attending? Um, there will be uh, sessions that, that I think CECCs would find of interest throughout the entire conference. So Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, there will be sessions that I think would, would be of high interest to CECCs. We do have most of our um, uh, sessions will be on Tuesday, um, so that's something to consider. But we definitely have um, important stuff uh, all throughout. Is attendance required? It is not required according to the grant from last year. The grant last year said that you must send two members to the CECC Institute, which was not held this year. But funds can be used, funds that the CECC held back for um, the CECC Institute can be used to send um, folks to this conference. Um, will there be CECC focused sessions? Absolutely. We're in the process right now of figuring out exactly what those are going to look like, but we will have several sessions throughout um, those three days that will be very focused on uh, important stuff for CECCs. What is the objective of the conference and who is the conference geared towards? This is an all inclusive conference, so we have invited anybody who has an interest in early childhood development. So we're going to have preschool folks there. We're going to have school districts there. We're going to have Head Start folks there. Um, CECCs have obviously been invited. Uh, we'll have um, child care there. So it's really going to be a great networking opportunity for all of you guys. And so with that, it's the objective of the conference is to make sure that all of uh, the early childhood educators in the state are speaking with one voice um, and understand all of these different topics. Um, okay, a few things to remember. This year we are only asking for one printed copy of your um, 
<coughs> excuse me, of your grant. We don't need those four additional copies of it this year. We're trying to go as um, as green and as uh, electronic as we possibly can, so we only need that one printed copy. Now, your um, cover sheet will still need to have the signatures and be notarized. Um, so they'll need to have the signatures of the chair and the fiscal agent on there, but that's the only copy that we're going to need. The documents on your USB or your CD, we have asked folks to send us one PDF document of your entire grant. So from that very first cover page to that very last um, conflict of interest or, or however you organize your um, appendices, if you can send us just one big PDF document on that, that would be really, really helpful. Um, we also are asking folks to send us the um, the templates that we have online, that work plan and that membership list and that budget, all of those, if you can add those um, on there as well as Word documents, that would also be really helpful. Um, we are working on, working on a database right now of all the different projects that you guys are working on, so we really need those particular documents to be manip manipulatable um, in our office. So if you can, so on your USB or your CD, there will be about four, well, at least four documents. One of your entire um, grant, your entire application, um, from that very first page to that very last page, one Word document of your membership list, one Word document of your budget, and then one Word document of that work plan. Um, again, it has to be postmarked by May 15th. Um, and you definitely want to go back and make sure that you're using those appendices for some of the decision making that you're going to be doing, uh, particularly when you're talking about um, uh, when you're when you're when you're thinking through um, how best to write your application, we provide you guys with that uh, scoring criteria that we actually provide to our reviewers as well. So again, just always kind of think about those different bullet points on on that appendices as you're as you're writing your application. We also ask that you use those templates. Um, like I said, we are uh, working on a database um, with all of that information. You always want to make sure that you clearly tie all of your identified needs to the elements of your um, strategic plan. So if you identify a need um, such as a, a high rate of teen pregnancy in your community needs section, you want to make sure that you uh, have a plan to affect that outcome in your strategic plan. And you always want to make sure that you um, are uh, where your application is on that steps to check release. Um, hopefully everybody knows that we have a couple of different, uh, about six different steps that we have to go through once your application has been accepted through our office. We have to, um, we get the MOU, then we get the MOU that's originally signed back from you, and then there's another process that we have to go through before those checks are, before those checks will be released from the finance cabinet. So just always remember that it does take us just a little bit of time to get all of those pieces in place um, uh, when we're working. So um, let me just really quickly run through these last uh, little uh, slides, and then we'll open it up for some questions. The next webinar uh, will be in May, and it'll be about the Born Learning Academies, where we'll discuss a lot of um, the, on how to implement and, and how, where that's going with the Race to the Top and the Toyota um, funding and all of that kind of stuff. So we're really excited. Hopefully Heather Deering, who is the Friskies director, will be joining us for that webinar. And then finally, we've, taught, we've discussed a lot the Ready Kids Conference, which will be June 16th through the 18th at the Galt House Hotel in Louisville. I hope to see a lot of, a lot of your faces there. Um, and uh, again, I want to thank you guys so much for uh, participating in another great webinar. We, um, I'm getting ready to open up the uh, floor for questions. Um, I do have one question down here in the chat box. Can we plan just one big activity like we did last year, or do we have to have a plan more than one when we do our work plan template? The thing to remember about the work plan, um, the work plan is not specifically, it's not so much about your activities as much as, as much as it is about your strategies. So you may have a couple of different strategies that are used in your um in your application, so for example, if you have a, uh, 
if you're having a parent day where parents are going to come in and um, uh, you're going to teach them some, some inexpensive things that they can do with their children for school readiness, but you're also going to invite child care folks to uh, to come as well, and they will receive clock hours for that. That's absolutely great. We love that kind of work, but you're using two different strategies for one activity. So while um, we have, while you can have one big event or you can have um, several small events, you may actually be getting, you'll, you'll be hitting several different strategies through one big event or through those several several events. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. And if you have more questions, I'm just going through and unmuting everybody real quick. I know I've got some folks unmuted. If you want to hit star six, you can also unmute yourself on the phone. And does anybody have any questions currently? Like I said, we went over some of those questions in um, whenever I would go th get some questions at one of those regional trainings, I would try to address them in the rest of them, but I may have missed some. Um, so I think everybody is unmuted. So if anybody has any questions, we're here to answer them. Looks like we got a couple of people typing in the chat box. Um, can a, vis a fiscal agent change during the course of the grant? I have never personally tried to do that. Um, knowing how a lot of the funding um, streams work, at least here on, on the state side, I would suggest trying to not trying to not let that happen. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure what the procedures would be um, to change a fiscal agent in the course of the grant, um, but I do not think that it would necessarily be an easy process. I'll put it that way. All right. Do anybody else have any, have any questions on, on where we are or what we need to do? All right, great. Well, I mean, I hope everybody on here knows that um, I am available for any kind of questions or, or calls that you have, um, emails. We try to get those up. Um, again, we'll also be continually adding to that frequently asked questions section of the um, the toolkit, so you can always go and check that before you um, reach out to us just to make sure that we haven't already answered that question. This webinar, um, as always, is recorded and it'll be put up on our website, so you can definitely go and check that for any of these questions if you've forgotten one of the answers. Um, yeah, so I think that's basically it. Uh, we have about five days before those intent to apply uh, need to be in. I know that most folks have already sent those in, but we um, still have a few that are outstanding. So um, uh, get those in as quickly as possible, and uh, we look forward to working with you. we got about a little over a month to get the applications in, so I'm really excited to see uh, what you guys are doing this year. Thank you so much for your hard work. Um, and I hope to see you at the conference. Thank you. Thank you.